is even in Sajapur or wherever I am sharing, I am sharing the same thing. I mean, it's always a continuation of what I am doing. And today also I uh, put up the alarm, but uh, uh, normally it is very hard for me to wake up. But I was like, uh, I couldn't sleep. Uh, and uh, I woke up before the alarm. Uh, uh, and I don't know, something was happening today. And I know that it is God was God was uh, speaking something to me, especially uh, especially with respect to my life. And it is about a general uh, our church life, especially about Christianity and about about the way that we need to grow as uh, believers. And that is what I want to speak to you all. And some of the songs, some of the verses that even Daisy has shared, it's all connected. And I'm so thankful that God is there among us and he needs to do something among us. And he, and I'm just, uh, I'm, to be honest with you all, I'm tired of normal Christian life. Normality is absolutely horrible for me. Uh, I mean, uh, the way we are going, and the, sometimes uh, our lives are like sine waves. That is what I uh, ex <laughs> give as an example of. It is just similar to a sine wave. Sometimes it is too high. Sometimes, I mean, maybe after a meeting or sometimes like after a uh, right. retreat or a powerful anointed uh, message, you will be on high. Then after that, it goes up uh, and then uh, suddenly it goes down and it, it goes directly into the pit sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it is not even normal. It doesn't uh, on a straight line. It goes directly down. Uh, and we feel, I feel miserable. I don't know. How many of you feel that? I feel miserable. Man, how how can this be? There is something wrong. There is something wrong. Every day should be a transformation experience. To be, uh, to be not from, I, I think I have told this before. Uh, it shouldn't be a better me tomorrow. It is towards Christ. I don't want to be a better Alvin. No, please. It cannot be. It is horrible. Uh, better Alvin is not where I want to be. So uh, to be Christ, to be like Christ is what we all would strive. And that is what God is. Uh, God has chosen us for, to be transformed into the image of his son. Let there be hundreds of Jesus, no problem with him. Okay, so there, there is no identity crisis. So there is a, for him, he understands. So I believe that is what God has been speaking to me. And I would like to uh, share it with you all. Uh, let us pray before we... Uh, spend a little time on this. Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, time. Thank you, thank you for this opportunity to come together. It's always a privilege, Lord, Lord, that we could meet with you and yes. among your saints, dear Lord. And I pray that, Lord, you will continue to minister to us. Let it be yeah. not my words, Lord, but let it be your word that is being spoken. Let it be not about my thinking, Lord. Let it be all about you, Lord. Yes, Lord, Lord, if it has to be broken, let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that, Lord, you will minister to each one of our hearts. And Lord, you will inspire us. Lord, you will instigate a fire in us, dear Lord, yes. that we will live a pleasing unto you, dear Lord. As Amen. we sang together, dear Lord, Lord, let it be a pleasing sacrifice unto you, dear Lord. Let us, let us let it be a living worship, living sacrifice unto you, dear. We yes. thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' most mighty name, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to share uh, the PPT. Most of the times, I am I am very scared when I talk. So uh, even uh, even if it is HSR or uh, are you able to hear me or did we, we get stuck? Yeah. We yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so maybe I would have written all the things that I want to because I don't want to miss out anything. So what I had it in my thoughts, I just put it in the PPT, okay? So please bear with me, okay? We will uh, go quickly through it, Christian living. Uh, I def define it as either Christ in living or in Christ living, okay? So it, whether whatever way you want to look at it, it is always Christ. Okay, and that is what we sang. If we, uh, I think the ending song was perfect. It was like, it is all about Christ. It is not about anybody else, right? Uh, can we declare that this is something, it's so powerful. Uh, I don't want, I don't want Paul to be declared, but I want this to be declared in our lives. 
So, so you can just, wherever you are, you can say to yourself and tell the devil outside who is just wanting to irritate us, tell him, I have been crucified with Christ and I know it is no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. That is it. Nothing else. Our Christian life is all about this particular verse. We can define it, nothing else. Uh, we can do that, nothing more. We can do it. We can do so many things, but ultimately it has to be. Bo it has to boil down into this. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Yeah. Uh, So the the whole point is uh, we are truly indebted to Christ. Okay, it is not we are when we have been when we are born again or when we have been taken out from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light by Christ. We are not indebted to anybody else, but we are in debt to God only. Okay, because we have been purchased by the precious blood of the Lamb, and this is what we have been called for in Romans. 8 chapter uh, chapter 8 verses 13 to 15 it says for if you live according to the flesh you will die there is nothing else that is mentioned right for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if the spirit you uh, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live for all who are led by the spirit of god are sons of god mm -hmm. it is it is very clear here for all who are led by the spirit of god are sons of god for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. it, is so, it is so powerful that we have been called for a particular purpose. And Paul is writing to a church here. It is not to the world outside. So it is not to the world that he's saying that if you live by the flesh, that you will die. But it is to the church. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. Mm -hmm. Can a born again believer still live a carnal life? Yes, that is why precisely uh, Paul is writing to the church that you have to set our minds on the things of the things above, not on the things of the flesh, right? And uh, for to set, uh, it says in Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 5 to 8, it says, uh, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Yeah. And that is the bottom line, right? When we, when we have to live our lives, we cannot live a life as carnal believers. Or uh, it has to be either a, believer, a born again believer or a carnal one, right? There are different kinds of ones, but uh, we still cannot go back living a life that is in a, that is a, that is in carnality but uh, this is what i said uh, about the sine wave that we always our lives goes up and down but our what god is wanting us to do that every transformation from strength to strength from glory to glory that is what is what he expects us that christ will be formed in us the purpose of even the church there is a verse in the Bible which says that the, till that there would be teaching and preaching till uh, till Christ is formed in you. That is the whole purpose of we coming to God, bringing us into His kingdom. Right? Uh, let us see some examples where where some people, uh, I mean, they live or live lives exactly like us, but then something happened. And uh, their lives were changed. The first one, uh, Peter. Uh, I mean, Peter is a very interesting guy. I mean, I love him because the way he is spontaneous, he is mostly like my wife. So, so I could always say, I mean, I would understand many other things, but I wouldn't talk. But uh, I mean, Peter would have that audacity, always, always in front, up front in talking it out, right? And when God, when Jesus asked him, who am I? Right, Jesus and Peter 
explained it. Peter told him, you are the son of God. You are truly the son of God. He had the revelation of God from God for which even Jesus acknowledges that, that this revelation has not come from any other person, but from God himself. And Jesus acknowledges that. But all these things, the understanding, I don't think uh, it helped him. Then you, uh, if you, if you remember how Peter and the other disciples, they were all more worried about where they would be seated in the kingdom of God. They were all worried about uh, all self-pleasing, self-exaltation. Everything was about about themselves. Then again, on the day of Passover, uh, the last uh, um, uh, la last supper uh, before that, uh, Peter, I mean, told us and told it bold. Lord, if they all deny thee, I am ready to go to prison and to death. Right? Amazing guy. And what self-confidence, right? Uh, um, and the whole of that life of Peter was all about carnal confidence in him, in himself. Uh, it is not that Peter didn't love Jesus. We all love Jesus. Even Peter loved Jesus. He knew him. He walked, he walked with him three years of his life. And he knew who Jesus was. And, but he would say that I will never deny my Lord. That was his confidence. But this was what happened. He denied him three times. And uh, Luke chapter 22 verse 61 says, And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept. Bitterly. And every time when I read this, every time I feel, Lord, how many times I have denied you, knowing who you are. Every time uh, I have gone against his will. And every time I did something which is contrary to what he taught me. I am, I have, I am denying, I am denying Christ in front of people. I am denying in front of uh, the world. I am denying in front of my family. And when somebody tells me, hey, didn't Jesus tell you like this? Isn't he uh, teach you like this? And no, 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 it is not like that. So am I not doing what Peter, Peter did that time? And every time I, uh, I feel so uh, uh, bitter, and that is what that same thing happened. Three times over, he told the lie. And once with an oath, I know not the man. He denied his Lord. And that is what it comes to with the life of the flesh. Absolutely, he was purely uh, purely doing everything in his flesh. And that is what happened to him. He failed miserably. Yeah, even, even when you look at uh, disciples uh, and Peter and every one of them, he had always talked to them about uh, uh, humility. Uh, humility and being, uh, being of uh, being uh, able to serve people, but always they had that selfish selfishness and their flesh about uh, their uh, when, uh, no, nothing nothing they did out of their out of the no everything that they did they but they they did it based on their strength based on their abilities they did everything uh, out of their understanding and that is what they failed miserably. And, but one thing that happened, Peter went out and wept bitterly. And if you look at the life of Judas, and if you look at the life of Peter, we all know this was the difference. He went back to God. And this is one thing, church, uh, that uh, it, it will help in our lives. Let us turn and look back where we are as a believer. Right? Uh, it is, I mean, I have written, uh, written down them some statements which... Uh, if you want to, if you want to have a, a study of this, we can we can even read that book called Deeper Christianity by Andrew Murray. It is a beautiful big, a book written, uh, and it is for every other believer, every believer who thinks that we can do on or on on our own. We have the understanding. We know everything. We know eschatology. You talk uh, sociology. You talk about theology. You know everything, but doesn't help in our lives. Does it, does it turn our life into Jesus every day? 
it will be a life that will be a changing every day and this is what i could i could write i know i am a believer but i am not living as i should to the glory of my god i am under the power of most of the time i am under the power of the flesh and all the self confidence and self will and self pleasing that marks my life and this is my prayer lord that you reveal to me and it should be our prayer that where i where we are failing we should be able to understand reveal to me what has been hindering me from having my life full of the holy spirit and if you uh, even if you look at the uh, israelites a group okay uh, they are like us right uh, typically brought brought out from the kingdom of darkness that is they were in slavery in egypt and they are now brought out and that is what happened deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 23 says and he brought us out from there and he that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to give to our fathers israelites were brought out from slavery to freedom and they were supposed to be a land, they supposed to go to a land that god had already promised a land for where they will find their rest but they roamed around in wilderness for such a long time right and this is what is happening in our life even we have been brought out from the kingdom of darkness into the into the kingdom of his light mm-hmm. and to himself and still we are roaming around in the wilderness why wilderness when i am saying when we are still dependent on ourselves when we are still uh, focusing on things that are around us or the worldly things we are still in the wilderness and that is what happened yes we have been redeemed yes we have been given a promise of a beautiful life in christ but we are not there we still don't want to let go of many things uh and some of the times what we think is we are uh, we are supposed to be like christ as soon as we take baptism and that is a scary thing some people don't take baptism because of this and some people become ba- uh, take uh, take baptism to become holy mm-hmm. and that idea is not workable right it is our indian way of way that is not it cannot be so easy right yeah and uh, for israelites if you take uh, take their life there were two steps one was bringing them out and the other was bringing them into the promised land it was the intention of god that israel should enter the land of canaan from kadesh barnea immediately after he had made his covenant with them at sinai but they were not ready to enter at once on account of their sin and unbelief and disobedience and they had to wander after that for 40 years in the wilderness are we there in the same condition are we roaming around in our wilderness church this is what uh, i would like to ask myself and this is what i would like to i mean i would encourage you to ask yourself where are we where am i okay there are a few questions which i was thinking as a believer why would we not want this that fullness that uh, why do we not want to go there the where the place it's so beautiful where it is god where there is god strength that will be manifested why we are not desiring that and it is and this power of god that is all that we need but we don't desire that why are we satisfied with what the world gives just we are sometimes that is what the case that is what is the case that uh, we are so satisfied with what the world gives we are in comfort we are uh, i mean sometimes we are uh, we are uh, so casual in the sense that we don't have a need most of the time that is a case because we are all well fed well dressed well we have the money to do anything uh, we want to buy yeah uh, i mean uh, you have the money you can buy any smartphone smart tv smart anything everything that is smart over here other than that, other than us mm-hmm. why we are not smart because we are still focusing on things of the world whereas god has 
called us to uh, look at things, things above, and that is He Himself. Are we too distracted? But the other thing is, are we too distracted by the things of this world? There could be several things that could take your attention from uh, the worries of this world, the job, many things, many things. Sometimes uh, even we wonder, we worry about our own children. The same children who God has blessed us with, that takes, uh, that, uh, that makes us worry. And I, I wonder, uh, I mean, wh- I mean uh, sometimes we pray for them. Sometimes we pray that God, uh, you bless uh, this couple with a child. Then once the t- child is born, after that, everything is gone. Right? So it is, it is so, it is, sometimes that is, that is a problem. Are we too blessed that we want to maintain? Yeah, let it be like this. Let it go like this. The status quo. We just want to maintain like this and not grow further. And sometimes we think that the blessings that we have right now is far more precious than Christ. Or sometimes, uh, other thing is even like Israelites. Israelites used to think we used to have this, we used to have that in Egypt, and now we are uh, hungry, we are thirsty, we are doing this, we are, we are not going to go anywhere. Uh, and this is what sometimes we always dip, also depend on yesterday's mana. When I say yesterday's mana, sometimes we no, I have attended that meeting Two years back, that was so powerful. After that, what? Nothing. Yeah. Are we still living on yesterday? There are people like that. Has the church become another club or social gathering without the life of Christ? And this is not much happening, uh, uh, relevant to our scenario right now because we are not meeting much. But otherwise, I mean, we have a group of people who are fully confident and that's it. We come together, have fun and then go back. But what about the life? So the life of Christ that has to be there in us. Are we, sat- are we satisfied so easily? So uh, I, would, I would say like this, a believer's life is a failure when we continue to live our lives on our own strengths. But mind you, as for the world, you might be very successful. But sometimes God makes us realize how weak our faith is or how helpless we are without him by allowing certain things to happen. And I uh, sometimes I think, God, God, whatever you want, uh, Lord, you do so that I could live a life that is pleasing unto you. I could be like Jesus. If something that has to be broken in my life, let it be broken and I pray that uh, I pray that uh, that I could I could focus totally on you, and I could live my life. It is not that we are when I am talking about focusing our uh, focusing our uh, uh, eyes on Jesus. That I doesn't I don't mean that you have to live leave everything, live everything and go to um, go and sit in one place and pray. I am not talking about that, but having a God consciousness, having a God. Uh, having a having a thought that God is always there with us, and God is always God is always giving us the power to live to be victorious, to overcome situations. If that is what I intend to be, like in the life of Peter when he failed miserably, he he had everything he wanted. He had uh, the perfect teacher. He had the perfect fellowship. He had everything that he, he had the teaching, he had the understanding, but he failed miserably. So what's the difference? Let us remember, salvation not is not the end. It's the beginning of a Holy Spirit-led life. It is the beginning. It should be the beginning of a Holy Spirit-led life. If today, church, if this is what if you think this is what is lacking let us sit and pray that spirit of god we need you we cannot live our lives uh, without you that should be the conviction that we need to have in our life for a believer bringing him that the same steps as was there in israelite life it was bringing him out of sin and the world and bringing him into Christ, a state of complete rest, 
this is what is supposed to happen in a in a uh, in a believer's life and 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 when even even when uh, even daisy was sharing about the prodigal uh, son story uh, about the elder son i think most of our, most of the believers are like elder sons right we are in the house we are with the father we are with uh, everything that and we continue our lives as it is in our own but depending our own righteousness selfish and fleshly confidence most of us we are stuck in that first step where what god has done in our lives he, he has bring, he has brought us out he has brought us out of the sin and the and of and from the world but we are unable to step into the land of rest that god has prepared to us prepared for us the the problem that i see is we do not this is a passage which i uh, which i could uh, relate to we do not want to leave our wanderings so true it is we do not want to live uh, our comfort what we have right now we don't want to live it where we have had so many wonderful experiences indications of god's presence with us and so many remarkable proofs of the divine care and goodness like that of the ancient people of god who had the pillar to guide them and a the manna given them every day for 40 years moses and aaron to lead and advise them all these things yes today that is there for even the church even for each one of us the wilderness is to us on account of these things a comfortable place a place of compromise and we are scared to leave it but church we are not realizing what we are missing out by by maintaining this thing, by maintaining the status quo by being satisfied in this wilderness we are missing out on the life that god has promised us powerful victorious in christ and like christ you look at uh, even the I mean, even what Paul was writing to Philippians, chapter three, verses seven to eleven. Can one of you read, just to ensure that nobody is sleeping? Mm-hmm. Sure. But when I, whatever I gain, I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. for his sake i have suffered the loss of all things and count them rubbish in order that i may gain christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law but that which comes through faith in christ the righteousness from god that depends on faith that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his suffering becoming like him in his death that by any means possible i may attain the resurrection from the dead uh, and uh, i when i read this i think that uh, uh, is paul is meaning all these things only for himself or or even for the church i believe it is for the church that we will know him mm-hmm. and the power of his resurrection in every day of our life we will be victorious yes we might fail sometimes even paul failed even peter failed even after he uh, when he was filled with see his life changed when he repented when he had the realization that he is so helpless without god but something happened on the day of pentecost right on the day of pentecost this same peter was turned around and he started to live based on the power of the holy spirit and his declaration and his uh, the the victories that he gained was only through god and that is what church i would like to it, it, you uh, we all of us here we cannot live our lives without having the power of the holy spirit without telling god that lord we need you without without having that understanding in our hearts that lord without without you we are so lost and we cannot be victorious without your presence knowing carrying your presence always and it is his promise that he is always there with us and for us mm-hmm. and this is this could be summed up as our life sometimes you are enjoying the fellowship with god sometimes 
we are separated from him. Sometimes we have nearness to him and at other times great distance from him. Sometimes you have willingness to walk closely with him, but sometimes there is even unwillingness. Sometimes we don't even warn him. That is scary part, right? When we are doing certain things, we don't want him. We don't want him around. We can be God's people and still leave, uh, live in wilderness. It happened to Israelites. It, ha it can happen to us today. We can be God's people, but still live in wilderness. We do not believe in the possibility of unbroken fellowship. And that is the, that is the greatest problem. We do not believe in that most of the time. Unbroken fellowship with him and unlimited partnership. And, un and that is why we, come, we become disobedient and uh, we did not live like a child doing God's will. And it is simply because we don't trust him enough and think that God could give us the power to have victory over sin. Can we, can we go to him? Are we willing to live, live this wilderness? Are we able to tell God, Lord, please forgive me. I most of the times I have not, I have not felt the need for you. Many of the times I have been satisfied with the many things around, the things of this world, but I didn't yearn for you. Lord, I want to do everything that is pleasing unto you. I want, to, I want you to keep me from all worldliness and from all self-pleasure. I want you, God, to help me to live like Peter after Pentecost, filled with the Holy, Holy Spirit. And this should be our prayer, that we would want to live like Peter. We would live like Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. Are we willing, willing now to live, leave that uh, wilderness life? Are we now going to give up our whole life to him? And, and it, is, it is a promise that God will, God is able, mm -hmm. right? Today we sang the song. I never put this. Okay. Oh, okay. He's able. He, uh, he's able to do immeasurably more than what we can think or imagine. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is his wand. It is his desire that we will be turned to be like his son, Jesus. And he will do only if we get back to him and tell him, Lord, I want to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Even uh, when you look at the Israelites, when they were about to see, first was their Red Sea experience. And second is when they came to the waters of Jordan. They were stuck there. And God told Joshua, right? Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Today, it is for all of you who's watching me and listening to me. It is a promise that he's telling you. Today, I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Mm -hmm. See, why, why God is promising this to uh, uh, Joshua? Because he was the only person who was willing to declare that no matter what happens, I will, me and my family will choose to serve God. Mm -hmm. And this is why, this is one thing that uh, God tells him, I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so that they may know that I am with you. It is not because of Joshua's ability. It is all because of who he was with. God was with him. And that is why he could, he could be victorious. And God give, gave the directions. And all the, and it was when you look at even Jordan, the river Jordan at the time, at this point of time, was it was flooded. Now I, I, believe, I have heard uh, uh, that there are floods in, uh, in, in Kerala and many other places, plenty of rains. And we can, and if you look at the pictures of a flooded river, you will be scared to even go near it. A river, yes, it is good to watch when we when it is safely flowing. 
but when it is a time of flood, you will not want to go near it. And this was a time where the uh, where the Jordan's Jordan River was at uh, flooded, and people were scared to go in. And God told Joshua that I will be there with you, and this is what he did. He wanted, uh, and this is what happened. See, if you if you read that last verse, and as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot uh, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. And if you want to re uh, if you want to go back and read this passage, please go back and read what God can do in your life mm -hmm. when you choose to follow Him, and when you when when you make your desire for God. I believe this is going to happen. We will be able to be victorious because the Spirit of God was there with Joshua. And this is what happened. Uh, the, the water was stopped. The flood was stopped. The river which was flooded, so flooded that people were so scared, it was stopped. Uh, can one of you read this? Uh, First Peter chapter 1, verses 17 to 19. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishably things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Church, let us remember this. Even when we dedicate our lives, uh, uh, rededicate our lives today to God, that we have been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. And we have been called, our life is to a life of holiness because our God is holy. Uh, it, it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 to 16, it says, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as you has he who had called you is holy, so you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Mm -hmm. And this is what God says today. Now, for all, uh, for all of us here, it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 13 to 15, our lives would be a spirit-filled life and spirit-led life. Amen. Right when uh, most of the time we have wrong ideas of a spirit life, spirit filled life, where you talk about uh, the giftings. Yes, it is about the giftings. Giftings will declare the glory of God. Yes, Amen. absolutely. But there will be there is another aspect where where we talk about the, the fruit of the spirit as well. And this can happen. We can happen only when we acknowledge the presence of God, acknowledge the Spirit of God, who is willing to fill, filling and uh, and fill in and make us victorious. Mm -hmm. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the Spirit of, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. Church, this is my, my uh, uh, I am imploring all of you. And this is my request to all of you. That let us acknowledge our need for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let us not be complacent. Let us get back to the first love, the passion, uh, and let us pray to God, Lord, fill me up. I need your anointing. I need your presence to fill me so that, so that we will be able to overcome sin and temptation. We need the power of God, Spirit. And we need to live in his fellowship, in his unbroken fellowship, without which we cannot stand or conquer. Let us offer the whole of us where we, where we can ask him to just come in and fill us. Let me close with this. Uh, close, uh, close with this. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18, 19, and 20. It says, 
don't get drunk with wine most of the time we say this right uh, so to, to people who i mean who has a drinking issue do not or we don't i mean we don't get into the next part of it it says that don't get paul is writing very clearly to the church don't get drunk with wine which is rebellion instead be filled with the fullness of the holy spirit instead be filled don't get drunk uh, drunk with wine but instead be filled with the filled with the fullness of the holy spirit and your heart with will overflow overflow with a joyful song to the lord jehovah keep speaking to each other with words of scripture singing the psalms with praises and spontaneous songs given by the spirit always give thanks to your father god for every person he brings into your life in the name of our lord jesus christ and this is one thing we christian life is a spirit filled life and a spirit led life and i believe Amen. this should be our prayer the lord i know that jesus christ is willing to be the captain of my salvation and to conquer every enemy for me he will keep me by faith and by his holy spirit and though it though it be dark to me and as if the waters would pass over my soul and though my condition seem hopeless i will walk forward for god is going to bring me in today and i am going to follow him and this would be our say that lord i will follow you into this promised land into this mm-hmm. promise uh uh what do you call it? a land of rest that he has promised us he has already taken us out of the kingdom of darkness and he is willing to take us into himself only thing is we need we need to acknowledge our need for his presence in our lives most of the times we are too satisfied by small small things in the things around us finding contentment in the things of this world but let us let us look to god lord i am not satisfied with this anymore i want your presence that i could become victorious and and i would be transformed into the image of your son jesus mm-hmm. i would like to live how jesus lived drawing strength from your presence and doing your will right so uh, let us pray heavenly father thank you for this opportunity to come together thank you for your presence here dear lord we pray that lord you will strengthen each one of us dear lord lord we need you and lord we need you holy spirit you come in a powerful way lord be enthroned in our lives be magnified we pray that everything that will be ours it's lord let it be you let it be you alone for everything that we have lord everything that we own everything that we put our confidence lord we consider it all dung and lord we pray that you will be our own help us to always sing lord and and think that that you are our all in all yes lord not only when we are, when we are when we are weak or even in our in our situations where we are down and out but help us always always and always dear lord, to look to you for our strength help us to glorify your name we pray that lord you will strengthen each one of us lord as your word says lord we will be transformed from glory to glory strength to strength into the image of your son jesus lord yes. let the ch- uh, let the church will teach and preach until until christ will be formed in us mm-hmm. until that hope will be established here lord we pray that you will minister to each one of us lord light up a fire in us a passion for your name dear we thank you we praise you in jesus most mighty name we pray amen. amen may the love of the father the grace of his son jesus and the fellowship of the holy